Hello again. Bypassing religious traditional mindsets. Quite a title. How to bypass. A bypass, like if your heart isn't working, then put some more pieces of artery from uh, other areas of your body. You bypass the uh, system that's blocked. Or in a town, the centre of town is always busy, they can give you a bypass. So bypass, this is a very important bypass. You have to bypass traditional religious thinking. If you don't, you're going to stay sick, you're going to stay poor, and you're going to make no progress in God whatsoever. You just enjoy a happy time in your club. Now, Mark chapter 7. One day, the Pharisees and certain religious scholars came to Jerusalem and gathered around Jesus. They were shocked to find that some of Jesus' disciples ate bread without first washing their hands. For the Pharisees, like all other Jews, will not eat without performing first a ritual of pouring water over their cut hands to keep the tradition of their fathers, or their elders. Similarly, when returning from the marketplace, they ceremonially wash themselves before eating. They also observe many other traditions, such as ceremonially washing cups, pitchers and kettles. So, the Pharisees, knowing all this, and religious scholars said to Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to our age-old traditions, passed down by our elders? They should first ceremonially wash their hands before eating. Jesus replied, this is verse 6, Jesus replied, you are hypocrites. How accurately did Isaiah prophesy about the phonies when he said, these people honour me with their words so their hearts are far away from me. Their worship is nothing more than a charade. They continue to insist that their man-made traditions are equal to the instructions of God. You abandon God's commandments just to keep men's rituals, such as ceremonially washing utensils, cups and other things. Then he added, how skillful you become in rejecting God's law in order to maintain your man-made set of rules. Well, you see, Jesus was not gentle when he dealt with Pharisees. You know, he was very, very direct. I take my cue from him. That's why I'm so direct. Jesus was direct. He didn't mess about. He told them the truth and the truth set them free. Now, in Acts chapter 7, sorry, in Mark chapter 7, the um, uh, King James says, you have made God's word of non-effect. This is 7.13. Make, you've made the word of God of non-effect by your tradition. That's in the same passage, just from the King James Version. Now, God's word is the highest you can go. God says uh, that he's put his word above his name. But if tradition has usurped the position of God's word, then you're not going to get your miracle because you're so into the traditions of your church, the ritual, the ceremonies, the candles, the robes and all that stuff. Forget it. You're not going to get the, the power of God flowing through. So if you are someone who's stuck in a traditional church and who can't get to anybody to pray for you, to heal you and so on, or to, to show you the way to get rid of those demons that you know you've got, then you, <laughs> this is why I'm here. I'm here to help you. As a lady wrote to me this morning, she's been without church since 2012. It's now 2022, that's 10 years. She believes in speaking in tongues. She believes in casting out demons, but she can't find a church that will agree with her. I haven't yet found out where this is. Probably America somewhere. So there are places that do preach the true gospel. And I'm one of those places. I don't preach opinion. I preach the Bible. And another person in history that uh, we know about is this lovely lady here. 
She's called Maria Woodworth Etta. Let me see if I can get her. Oops, we get the right side. Let's go that way. Oh, I'm not doing very well. There we are, Maria Woodworth Etta. She had tiny hands, but in a meeting when she lifted her little hands, electricity would go through the people. They were electrified. And Maria herself would go into a trance. Now, I found out uh, that when God sent the Apostle Paul to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish world, uh, this is in Acts chapter 22, uh, Paul came to Jerusalem, he's recounting in his defence when he was uh, arrested in Jerusalem. He said this in verse 17. It came to pass while I was coming again to Jerusalem, while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. You see, God moved his natural mind and he stayed in a trance. Don't get frightened, I'm not usually like this. <laughs> and... Uh, and then the people got him out of Jerusalem, and uh, when, when he was escaping, God said to him, Depart, for I will send you to the Gentiles. And when he was telling this story at his uh, Jerusalem trial, the people were quiet. They gave audience to this word, and then suddenly lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow, he doesn't deserve to live. Going to the Gentiles, those unwashed, uncircumcised people, what do you think of it? And Paul was sent to the Gentiles. The Jews, um, the Jews in the synagogues wouldn't accept him, so Paul was sent to the uh, to the Gentiles. But for God to get that instruction to him, he had to move his mind out of his way. And what does God have to do with you? If you're stuck in a religious situation, and you're doing the same things over and over again and praying and praying and praying, trying to get free from demons or trying to get healed, you're doing the wrong thing. You use your authority against demons. And I've said this on the, on the, other, on the other videos and I'll continue to say it. So let God move you out from your traditional religious mindset and then you're going to make some progress towards what you want to see happen in your life and in the lives of the members of your family.